lecture. Uh, in the last, the, in the lecture yesterday, we finally obtained this, this theorem in which I'm saying that we, I will prove the, the, uh, the limit of the interval dynamics. I will prove that the interval dynamics in the limit will be Markov. We, if you can uh, prove the convergence of these, of these, uh, these real numbers to these, to these numbers, and here our uh, hypothesis is now written in terms um, of the capacities. So basically here you are say, we are saying, we are requiring that uh, the interval capacities is uh, a smaller, is of a smaller order than uh, the capacities inside the, inside the wall, inside each wall. Uh, in my opinion, this is very, very bad. This is, uh, this infimum is too, is too, it's too bad. So I would be happy if maybe we can change that for another number like uh, a kind of spectral gap inside a well. That would be, would be nicer. But okay, this is what, what you have, what we have so far. Um, <clears throat> good. So in order to apply our theorem, we need good estimates about capacity. So let me show you one one case in which we can compute capacities. It, it's very easy to compute the capacities. For example, um, for a, a kind of one dimensional dynamics, like a birth and death process. This is a Markov process on a finite state space on which you can only jump to the left or to the right with some, some rates. Let me suppose that my rates are, uh, for example, are all positive so that this, this is a recurrent, uh, sorry, uh, irreducible Markov process. You have only one stationary, um, only one stationary distribution, which are, we are calling mu. And now suppose that you would like to, to compute the capacities, the capacity between these two, two subsets of our state space, okay? So this capacity is the L2 inner product of these two functions. Okay. Good. Uh, so, and this is also equal to, here you can change this VBI by, by VIB. And now uh, in the reversible K, uh, I don't know, if Okay, in the reversible case, this is the, just the, you, you see here the inner, um, directly inner product. Okay, um, something that I didn't, I didn't say yesterday was that uh, the capacity is symmetric in the subsets. That's very as easy. I mean, remember that I'm not assuming cap, uh, reversibility. So uh, that's easy because these two functions are functions defined on this, on this subset like indicators, and then they are, they have been extend, extended uh, harmonically with respect to the, to this generator. Yeah, so you can obtain the same thing. Maybe there is a factor here because of the of the of the measure, but this is not a problem. And and you can put here uh, just the indicator of the set A the indicator of the set B, and here you take the trace of the process just on the union of these two uh, subsets, A and B, okay? Now, so th this is the product for the, the, inner, the L2 inner product for the measure condition to the union of these two subsets, okay? And now, 
the indicator of one is one minus indicator of b, and the same for b. Because we are chasing the, because the union of a and b now is the whole state space. This is the trick, okay? In this way, we see that finally we obtain the same thing if we change the, the order of the subsets. Okay, now, <laughs> uh, so this is what we need to compute. As we have already said, uh, this, this function VAB, this potential function, is a function equal to one over A. Let me call this, this point the, the point A, let me call this, call this point a B. And this VAB, I'm sorry, must be equal to zero on the subset B. And then we, uh, now, we have to extend this function on the whole state space. Uh, I didn't say that yesterday, but actually, but actually the extension is like that. For example, uh, in my extension, the, va the value of the extension here will be exactly the probability of reaching the subset A before reaching the subset B. Here, for example, it is, it's impossible to reach the subset A before B. So here the, the number for the extension, for, the, for this extension is equal to zero. Here with probability one, you would reach the, the, the state, the subset A before B. So here the extension is constant equal to one. And now here, uh, here it's, uh, it's uh, an exercise to extend harmonically and you will finally obtain the following expression for your capacity. This is something very well known. This is like an, a circuit, circuit and here you have something in series. So uh, it's very well known that this capacity, this total capacity will be uh, the sum, the inverse of the sum over these nodes uh, from a to B of the inverse, uh, uh, okay, A plus one until B of the measure, <coughs> where you should, com we must compute, if this is X, we compute, ah, sorry, we compute the measure of this uh, point X times the rate of jumping from x to x minus one, which is actually equal to compute the uh, qx, uh, uh, I'm sorry, x minus one x times mu x minus one because of the reversibility. Okay, so it, okay, we have, I have chosen, I have chosen here to prove this, to put this expression. So this is the explicit expression for our capacity here in the one dimensional case, in this one dimensional dynamics, for example, in the burden, burden the process. Actually, this is the burden of the process. Uh, and now, as an exercise, for example, in our example two that I gave in the first lecture, remember that you have two arms. You have n balls. Uh, and balls in the total, and now you choose one ball uh, uniformly among the the end balls, and you move it to the other arm. So here, if we observe the number of balls in the arm one, this is just exactly a um, birth and the process. Okay, we can choose a ball in R1 with probability x over n. So this rate or this probability will be uh, x over n. 
and the probability of jumping to the other way is uh, n minus x over n. Uh -huh. The state space of this Markov process is uh, zero n. Okay, so this is this was our example in the first lecture. And now the question is, suppose that your process is starting in the middle. Okay, maybe this is not an integer, but okay. Now, uh, okay, we are starting here. And now you know that you will be near to the middle for a very, very long time. Let me define this Tn as the time you need to, to, to wait to see that your process is finally far from the, from the middle. So near, so here, I need a, a number to say that you are really far. Let me use a bn to quantify this distance. Okay. Now, uh, a good question is, what I need, what will be, would be enough about this bn to uh, prove that this time in the good time scale converges to an exponential distribution in low. Of course, here the parameter of this exponential distribution must be must be one. Okay. So here I need some hypothesis about Bn, of course. Because if Bn is not too is not too large, uh, for example if, if Bn is just is just one or two, for example, that that uh, that not that that is not true, for of course. Okay? Uh, for this model I can actually tell you exactly the, the environment measure, the stationary distribution for this Markov process, which is exactly, um, how do you say that? N chooses X or X chooses N? N chooses X. So this is, so for this example, I can tell you exactly what, which is the, the environment measure. Actually, in our approach, we need to know the environment measure in order to, to make uh, estimates. Uh, uh, and now in this, in this case, you can also compute so all the capacities that you want, okay? So, I can tell you that here, um, Okay, I will tell you later. Uh, let me put this in a more abstract setting. Uh, so now, in your state space, you, you observe one point, like this midpoint, from which it's very difficult to, to get far. Uh, yes, to get farther, to get far from it. Okay, uh, so you will be here near to this point for a very long time, but someday, someday, you will, uh, you will go, you will get far, you will, you will escape, and then, <coughs> around this point, as in my example, there is a, a subset of the state space inside which the process will be the most part of this this, this time, 
before leaving. Okay. But from time to time, you you will see that your process is can 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 get outside this 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 subset. So can exit this this subset. So here we need to be precise about our definition of the escaping time. We need some some value defining exactly when we are escaping from from this point. So here there is another subset that we call uh, let me okay let me put the name here that we call the basin and once I have uh, determined one once I have fixed my my basin I define me I define my escaping time according to this to this basin Yeah, so, uh, so you have a well, you have a basin, and this basin defines your, your escaping time. And now I can adapt the, our last theorem, the theorem of yesterday, to, to, uh, to ensure that this time, the escaping time is converging to the exponential uh, distribution in a good time scale. Uh, this is what that we, we need to prove. This is a it's the same thing that as before, just for the for the well and the complement of the basin, okay? And these are the, the capacities inside the, inside the well. This is what you you need to to check to obtain these results. Here, uh, this is okay. Uh, for for this theory, I just made something something more to adapt our last theory to this case. Okay, it's not an, it's not something new. In this case, our delta set is the difference between the, the basin uh, and the wall. So we also we will also require in this theorem that no, as just as before that the a uh, stationary measure of the delta set compared to the, the stationary measure of the wall is going to zero. Okay, that's enough to to obtain the this uh, exponential distribution in the limit for the escaping time. Okay, now is really an exercise to prove that in this in this case the hypothesis that you need about your your Bn is that this Bn is larger than the square root of n. Okay? Uh, that's enough. So uh, you, you can take, for example, Bn equal to n or Bn uh, smaller, but uh, you need to have that this Bn larger than the square root of n in order to have the exponential distribution in the limit. Okay? Okay, good. So now let me. Uh, I, y yes, it, uh, yes. This will be my uh, my meta point. Uh, uh, but it's an exercise, <laughs> okay. And you can, and uh, it's necessary to fix. So here you need to decide who will be your your well. And of course, you need to make a good cho choice for this for this well because if your well is uh, is too large, it will be difficult to verify that that this is true because the capacity here is taking over uh, all the the size inside the well. So your well, you 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 your well cannot be too too large, but if your well is too small, then uh, your delta set is too large. 
so you won't so you will not be able to prove that so you need to go you need uh, uh, you need to choose suitably the size of your of your world in order to apply this theorem um, I don't remember that maybe uh, I think that uh, anything between the square root of n and b n uh, it's it's enough it works I mean about the size yeah the size of the well I I believe that anything between b n and the square root of n in this case uh, will work but I, I'm not sure I'm not sure And actually, once you have proved that, uh, you don't. Uh, you can you can you can say that this these times is converging to the exponential distribu the distribution limit. That's the the distribution of the limit for this for this for this escaping time is exponential. Bec uh, even starting from any point in the in the in the world, you don't need to start from the meta point. No, you you can start from any 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 point. Because uh, you will go up. Actually, you will go to the meta point instant instantaneously in the in the in the time scale of this escaping time. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. So uh, now let's let's uh, recall my my sticky storage process. You have fixed a uh, a finite set S, you have fixed an irreducible set of, of rates over this, this S. Now we put uh, N particles over this, this this finite set. And now the transitions are, you can see a, a particle jumping from, from one side to another side with a rate uh, which depends just on the on the positions on the sides and the number of the particles in the sides from which the particle is, jump, is jumping. Uh, sorry here, these are probabilities, yes. I changed the problem, the discrete time for problem for a continuous time problem, taking these as uh, my transition rates, but actually the two problems are equivalent. Yes, these two, uh, because this expectation is going to infinity, the difference between uh, the this discrete time, escaping time, and the continuous escaping time are syntactically the same. So the, the two problems, the discrete time and the continuous time, are equivalent. Uh, sorry. Okay, these. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so these are the rates for the for our Markov process. Uh, yes, about this 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 function gx, uh, we just need this assumption. Th this mx, this m is the stationary measure for the, for the rates r, okay? So according to the, to the stationary measure on the site x, is, uh, I'm, I'm requiring something about this function g corresponding to the site x, okay? Good, so uh, in this way, we have defined the Markov process, which is my Interacting, interacting, interacting particle systems called the zero range process. Um, here, okay, of course, the, the process is well defined. The dynamics of the process is well defined with these 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 two functions. But about the about these gx, I don't care about the the exact uh, the precise uh, expression for this function. I just the only thing that I need about this expression is this is that this, this expression is converging to, to this number b. So in, in my limit, when as n goes to infinity, I, can, I will forget the, the, the precise expression of gx, and the only thing that I will see in the limit, in the limit is, the, is this number b. So this is the important number. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the, the only important thing about the function gx. Good. So, um, okay, so let's put in the initial configuration, all the particles in just one, one side. Uh, 
here, for example, I will put 40 particles at each side. I have five sides. And here my V is equal to zero. This is what, what happens. It's just uh, you see nothing special there. Uh, in this simulation, my A is one half, uh, I'm sorry, it's one, uh, yeah, it one half. One half to the right and one half to the left. <coughs> so it's a nearest neighbor. So nothing special you see there. But now, let me put here b equal to, to 5, for example. And now what you see is that yeah, at this side, for example, the, the side one, uh, once you, you, you have seen just a, lit, a few particles, then it, it, it's very, it, it's really difficult to see that the number of particles grows here at this side. Okay, so finally you have, you see that these two sides are, are fighting in order to have all the, the particles. Go five, go five. I suppose that five is is winning, but uh, but okay. This is what happens uh, if you put a, a large b. So let me suppose that b is larger than one. Then, uh, as you have seen, and I, I I I told you about that in the first lecture. We can define these these our uh, our wells as as uh, neighborhoods of this kind of, of 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 configurations. So if you have k uh, sites in your k uh, elements in your set S, you will have k uh, uh, k wells. And here is a you cannot avoid the fact that you will see a delta set, okay? Also as as, as in our other example. Uh, and you need to, of course, you need to speed up now your process in order to see something because the, uh, this is what you will you will uh, you will see uh, for for many for a long long time uh, in your system. So I propose this this scaling time this, this time scale n to the b plus one, okay? So this time scale depends on this parameter, exactly on this parameter, and only on this parameter, b, okay? Good, um, good, so once we have rescaled our process, uh, at this, over this time scale, I can prove that the time that you, that the process spends inside the delta set is negligible, is going to zero as n goes infinity. Let me, let me speed up this process. So uh, five is too much, you see. N to the six is, too, is a long, long time. Let me put something like 2.3, and now I will speed the process in 100, uh, and now let's run. So you see that this, this first, uh, the first stage, the first part of our trajectory is, almost, is, uh, is instantaneous. Uh, this first part in which you are saying, you are, you, are, you are looking at the particles going to just condensating in just one single site, this is what we call the nucleation of the process. But okay, uh, this is what you, so if you are interested in in uh, studying the nucleation of the process, you need to, you don't need to, sp you, you need to slow down your, your process, yes? The, the velocity must be something different. But here we are interested in, in examining the, 
the process in this time scale n to the d plus one, in which uh, you see that all the, all the particles are concentrated in just one single side. You, you see a tower of particles, uh, and now in times of order one, if you are in the time scale n to the d plus one, then you will see that this tower jumps from one side to, to another side, yeah? So in this time scale, over this time scale, we take the trace of the process of the of original process just on the, on the union of the wells, and then uh, this xn now in, in this example will be the, the, uh, the, the position of our tower of particles. This is, the, this is what the physics, physician, physics, call, physics calls the condensate. Um, and then just with our theorem, our, our the theorem that we proved yesterday, uh, we are able to prove that this, this position of the tower in the limit will be a Markov process and actually, I can tell you exactly what are the the, the rates for this uh, for this Markov process limit um, in the limit. Uh, so this is just a constant depending on the on the value of the parameter b, okay? And this number, this number is is the following. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, as here, you need a well which is not too large and it's not too, too small. So, for example, a co uh, corresponding to the side X, my well is the configurations where the density of particles is um, almost one. Uh, let me put here an LN over N. Uh, yep, and this LM uh, is something that I don't remember. <laughs> but you need that this LN over N, uh, yeah. On the one hand, this LN must be a sequence going to infinity so that in the microscopic level, you see that this neighborhood uh, has a number of particles, has, a, num has a, a number of configurations growing up, yeah? So microscopically, this, 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 is a large, this is a large subset of the state space as a configuration. But macroscopically, you need to see that this, uh, that this subset is, is, is converging to a point. Uh, yep. Yes, but uh, actually, you need something something better than that. This is not enough in order to apply our techniques. The, the problem is about uh, how you estimate the capacities inside the well. So we cannot we cannot we have we don't have good estimates about the capacities inside the well if you just consider this condition. This is not enough for us in our techniques. Maybe that, maybe it's true that that is enough, but in our by using our theorem, we cannot prove that this is true. That you have meta uh, this tunneling, uh, this I'm sorry, this uh, this metastability, this interval dynamics, just with this condition. We need something. Uh, okay, I don't remember exactly the the hypothesis about the the LM. Uh, you need to put here something uh, which depends on the on the number of sides, I, I believe, yes. Yes, this, this exponent, this exponent depends on the number of sides, and, and maybe that's true, I, I, I really don't know about this, this the, the, the enough conditions. Okay. Uh, good, so. Uh, yeah. So remember that, this is, uh, in our dynamics, the rate, the microscopic rate, uh, is an is nearest neighbor. So uh, just once, one particle can only jump to the left or to the right. Now, a nice question is, what, what about uh, the tower? Can the tower jump from the position four to the position two, for example? Okay? What, uh, 
I think that is not a, a trivial question. Uh, remember, each particle can only jump to the, to the left or to the right. Can the tower jump very far away from this, from this position four? Okay, the answer is given by, by, the, by our computations on the limit of the, of the transition rate because in the limit, this transition rate for the, for the limit, in, for the process in the limit, is a constant times. Okay, here, recall that R. Oh, oh nice. Recall that my, my R is the transition rate just in the site S, on the site S, sites in S. Okay, now, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the simulation answered the question, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, but yeah. I just, I just learned, I just learned about simulations two years ago. I started to think about this problem six years ago. I was too, too happy when I, when I saw for the first time I, my little, little toy, my, uh, I, I was so, so happy when I, when I could play that I spent the whole, the whole day just regarding, just watching my, my zero range. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, so this number is exactly the following thing. Suppose that this is your S, and so remember the <laughs> remember the notion of the the trace of the process. So take the trace of this R just over these two two points, and now compute the rate the rate of this uh, of this transition for the trace process. This is what exactly you see in the limit for the, for the tower of, of particles. Uh, okay, we have already proved that. In that reversible case, I mean, when the, the measure M for R, for R is, is reversible, and uh, Claudio proved that that is also true in the totally asymmetric Asymmetric case in the cycle. So, uh, total asymmetric means that you can only jump to the right. This is a cycle, so R is still irreducible. And the stationary measure for this R is. Uh, is the uniform measure. Okay, so, actually, uh, here, this number will be always positive. So, for the tower of particles, in any case, you can always jump from one position to another position. In my simulation, in which you can only jump from, from this position to the, to the right or to the left with rates one and one. What happens is the following. Um, fix some point x, y, and when you compute this number, remember this is uh, this this is equal to the indicator of the point X. Here you, you put the generator for the trace process. Uh, you apply this generator, this trace generator at this indicator. And here, okay, maybe you need to put a constant here. <coughs> and so, now, uh, here you only have two, two sides, so the union of these two, two subsets is the whole state space for the trace, okay? So here, um, this is so cool, this is also, this is finally the, cap the capacity 
for the trace process for these two two sides for the trace process but uh, okay let me let me let me do it in the following way sorry uh, here you can change this this indicator by this indicator putting an I minus here so you still have the trace process here and now in order to make computations in the whole state space in the whole s you can uh, apply the the original generator but you need to extend harmonically your two indicators okay so put a one here put a, a zero here this is the the indicator of the side uh, i changed the this y for an, for the x yeah sorry this is why it appeared uh, a minor here so now uh, this is the indicator of the position x when you only on g only you focus your attention only in these two, two points but now you need to extend this function harmonically remember that uh, the index ext the extension at for example this point will be the probability of reaching this guy before reaching this guy okay and then you compute that and this is exactly the the capacity between these two two points and finally this number will be uh, some constant times a uh, one over okay let me let me call the this this d1 the distance between x and y if you are going this way and let me call d2 the distance between x and y if you go in this in this way so this number will be exactly 1 over distance 1 times distance 2 okay so now you see that uh, that the rate of jumping from x to y is 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 always positive but it's is is um, smaller is small when the other point other point is is far away okay that is that is very natural what happens here for example in which uh, you can only jump to the right what is your your guess about the tower of particles okay in this case again you put a one here you put in the index you put a zero here and now uh, and now again you need to extend uh, this function harmonically with respect to the generator here with respect to the generator of, of this trace of this race yeah so when you stand harmonically if you are here what is the probability of reaching this position before this position is one yes because you can only jump to the right yeah so in the harmonic station uh, extension you will put a one in all these positions in all these sides and now if you are here what is the probability of reaching x before reaching y you will go you can only jump to the right so this probability is zero okay and now when you compute uh, this number this inner product uh, this is something that is equal to to zero here 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 actually yes and and just and this number is equal to one here yeah on the other hand this uh, the extension of the indicator of x is zero here 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 and so this is the only the only part in the the only part in which we have something different from zero 
So finally, this will be one. This will be going irrespective of, irrespective of the, two, the two positions. So in this model, in which the, in which the particles can only jump to the right, to the nearest neighboring uh, side in the right, uh, you will see that our particles jumping from a side X to another side, and the tower will choose the other side uniformly. Yeah? That is very uh, amazing. Uh, I, I think that is very, very amazing. Um, good. Okay, so just to finish, to finish uh, this is the Martingale approach in which uh, in one step you have to, to you need a, a good idea to, to prove a replacement lemma. You need to replace this guy, yes, but these other numbers. And then you need to prove that, that this sequence of real numbers is converging to something. Yep, good. In our uh, theorem, you use the fact that inside your wells, you have some meta points. Yeah, of course. The form of G is quite specific. He, uh, some less, uh, you, you only need, okay, let me. You only need that. Yeah. Yes, G must be something like, uh, yes, okay. This constant times B over N, yeah. Yes, something like that. Uh, GX of the number of particles, yeah. Essentially is that, yes. If you? Ah, yes, uh, it must be. I, I don't know exactly what happens. I don't know what happens. Um, I mean, for example, uh, actually in, in our in our theorem, in our in our paper, we consider the following uh, situation. So suppose that suppose that here uh, at this point, this point, and this point. Your GX here, here, and here converges to the corresponding number, and in the nice way, and in in this nice way. And suppose that um, uh, on this other side, your function G is converging to something uh, smaller. Or it's just smaller, so let me take the, the lean soup of this GX is uh, e something smaller than the corresponding M. This is what happens here and here, okay? So th they are converging to the, to, the right, to the right number, the GX, as, as the number of particles is going to infinity, they are converging to the right number, and then the other sides the, this function is converging to something, or oh, it's, it's smaller than the, the number that the, the instantaneous for the for the for the rates are. So what happens is that if you put all your particles here, for example, you will see that in the time scale, in this time scale, you will see that all the particles will rapidly will go to one of these of these of these of these sides. So all the particles will concentrate, for example, in this side. Yeah, something like that. Yes, 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 uh, yes. What happens now is if 
Okay, if all the particles are here, now what you will see is, a, is this metastability behavior. And so the tower now will be here for a long time, and then the tower will jump to one of these other positions. Just to the positions in which the, the GX is converging to something, to something, uh, okay, to something good. I mean, re remember that this, this M is defined just up to a, a multiplicative constant. The M is not a probability measure. Okay, so I have fixed an, an M, uh, but this is not well defined. Uh, uh, you can multiply that by two and, and you obtain another stationary measure. So what I'm saying here is that uh, if you have your uh, GX, the only important sites are the, uh, the sites in which the GX is converging to the... No. I mean the stationary measure of, the, of R. It's quite specific. It's quite specific. So you, you fix it, you are here. You look at the stationary measure, and now you will see this metastability behavior only on the sites in which, um, okay. <laughs> uh, how can I? I don't know what happens if GX is converging to something larger than, larger than MX. Uh, I don't really know what happens in that, in that case. I, don't, uh, I just know what happens if GX is converging to something smaller than MX. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yes, yes, that, that is also true. But I put in that in this way because actually, uh, in my point of view, uh, this is important, S and R, and this is uh, artificial, fictitious. So I put my GX in this way uh, because I, uh, this is my point of view, <laughs> so that I, I, I make something artificial here, we put in these particles just to, to just uh, so in order, sorry? Uh, the tr no, no, the tr yeah, yes, okay, okay. Just to construct something which, yeah, okay, that's really true. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry? No, that's, yeah, no, it's very known model. Um, uh, events, yeah, the physics. Introduce this model. Um, yes, so uh, they take uh, examples in which just the DMX is, is, uh, um, is constant, is constant. So GX, so the, the function G, you, you can take the function G, actually what is, what, what they, okay, the function G will be uh, the same at each X. Uh, okay, I have another point of view of that, but uh, okay, this is this is interesting for the physics for the physicists. Um, yes. Um, I don't know exactly what happens with when G X is converged to something bigger than M X. I don't know what exactly happens. I don't know either what happens if, for example, this B is equal to one or if this B is smaller than one. Um, I don't know. Um, something for me very, very interesting is what happens when this S is getting larger and larger. So that, for example, uh, this R over S uh, is uh, a random walk in, a, in the discrete torus, for example, on, the, or on a finite, uh, network and you, well, so, okay, what happens when this random walk is converging to a Brownian motion? What happens with the, with this zero range process? Uh, this is something that uh, I, I would like to, to think about. 
Uh, and so for me, so, you, so in, in this point of view, I'm more interested in the, what happens when you take nice uh, uh, Wonder Wall here. And then you construct these guys, these artificial guys. You attach these artificial dynamics on this, on this important uh, dynamic. And what can you say about this, uh, about th this, uh, these dynamics by using this artificial dynamic? This is the point of view that <laughs> I'm trying to say here. But of course, the, the physics, the, in physics, this zero range is, is important. And so this was the, the original question. Um, if I can, if we can, we could prove uh, something about something. Uh, if we could, we could get a dynamic result about this, this, this process, because all the results that that uh, people knew about this process was about just a stationary mesh or something very stationary. Uh, yes, um, I have time. Okay, it's just to finish. Uh, in, just to finish, in, in this program about, uh, in, in, the, in the program in the Martingale approach, remember that uh, we need to, to prove the replacement lemma, okay? So if uh, we used the, the, the meta points inside the wells to get our replacement lemma in our theorem, in our precise theorem, and now let me give you some, some more ideas about that. Um, this is just the Dinkins Martingale. Yep. Now, uh, suppose that you are able to prove that the process Xn, that the sequence of process is tight. Okay? In our proof, we use that you have the meta points to prove the, the tightness. But suppose that you have, you have another uh, independent uh, proof for the tightness. Okay? You already know that you, you have tightness. Then you know that in, that time, in this time scale, that the time scale is, called, is right. For, for X, You're, you are in the right time scale. So now, uh, let me do the, thing, the following thing. This is again the Martingale problem, the Dinkins Martingale. Now take a, a time average on the time, okay, here, so that this time average uh, is smaller than the time scale in which you are uh, looking at your process X. So that when you perform this, this time average here, no, nothing will happen with X, okay? Because it's too, it's too slow for, for him. So you will obtain the same thing, X, X, and X here. But for, for, this, for this term, the thing is different. If you take a, B, a beta n, a time scale, long enough to see that this, this process is a, is getting, uh, I don't know, in order to use a, a, a kind of, uh, of ergodic theorem for this process at this time scale, because this, this, is, this time is, is, la, is, la, is a very long time for, for him. So, using that, maybe you are able to, to change this, this guy for, uh, for, this other, for this other number, okay? So this is another idea that, that we actually use in another, in another model. Uh, another thing, is uh, you have your partition. Here is the projection. Here you take a function f, a test value, a test function. Uh, so, and you you know that it's enough to take just, for example, an indicator of just one side, yes? So the function that you are applying to the Markov process is actually um, something like the indicator of a wall. Yes. And in fact, our enemy, this, this term, is the generator applied to this, to, this, to this function, to this indicator at the, at the site x, at the point x. So 
uh, you see that this, this, this function or this, this term, this expression, will be very, very ugly for us, will be very annoying because of this, because of this function, this indicator function. So I, I think, I believe that maybe if you, f if you uh, choose another function which is in some sense is, is smoother than this, than this indicator, for example, something similar to a, a, to a eigenfunction for the generator R. So you will get some a gentler function here, and that will be helpful. Uh, but OK, of course, you need here to take something smoother, but which is very, as n goes to infinity, he must converge to, to this indicator, yes? But so this is, this could be could be helpful, and actually this is this was an, an idea for another another paper, um, and Anka, okay. Now to finish, uh, this is the the paper in which we we wrote that the basic the basic uh, theory. Um, here we we applied our theorems for the for the reversible C uh, C-R-H process. Then uh, this is the, the paper in which, uh, ah, yes, in this paper we, we wrote the, uh, our, our, our theorem in the non-reversible case by using these capacities for the non-reversible case, and we proved all that. Uh, then Claudio uh, proved the case in which the dynamics is uh, totally asymmetric. Uh, and finally, this is the, the paper in which we introduced these, these new, new ideas for this approach in order to get uh, the replacement lemma in, in the case in which you don't have meta points inside the walls. Okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>